Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi. Today we're going to discuss kidney cancer, and I have the pleasure of being with Dr. Jaime Rashan, assistant professor of medicine at University of Miami. How are you? Thank you. Good. Thank you, Dr. Rashan. Can you please explain what kidney cancer is? Kidney cancer is a malignant tumor of the of the kidney that. Um, uh, occurs in approximately 60,000 patients each year mm -hmm. in the United States. The frequency of kidney cancer actually is increasing at mm -hmm. a rate of about 2% per year for reasons that are not clearly understood. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also is responsible for about 13,000 deaths from the disease uh, each year in the U.S., at least in 2011. The, uh, the most common type of kidney cancer is called renal cell carcinoma, mm -hmm. which uh, comprises about 90% of the, of the kidney, of the malignant tumors of the kidney. And uh, um, there are uh, several subtypes of uh, renal cell carcinoma, mm -hmm. and each one has different uh, uh, prognosis and different clinical characteristics. Uh, the most common subtype, which is occurs in about 85% of all the new renal cell carcinomas is uh, called the conventional type or clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Mm -hmm. Less common forms of renal cell cancers are papillary type and about 10 to 15% of the cases and even less common are chromophobe or collecting dog carcinomas. Mm -hmm. well, what does that mean for the patient if they have the different subtypes? Well, uh, each different subtype ha is associated with a different biological characteristics and also, a, in some cases, different clinical characteristics, mm -hmm. as well as a, a variability in terms of prognosis and responses to treatment. For example, most of the advances in the treatment of advanced kidney cancer mm -hmm. uh, with the targeted agents, which we will talk a little bit later, are in uh, the conventional type or clear cell type RCC, where uh, uh, these new therapies they are associated with much better response rates mm -hmm. than on the l less common uh, pathologies. What are some symptoms that may be associated with kidney cancer that a patient might experience? At this state and age, uh, the majority of kidney cancers uh, that are diagnosed are diagnosed without symptoms and this is probably due to the fact that there are a, 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 there's a very frequent use of uh, imaging techniques for different reasons that detect a small kidney lesion or an intermediate sized kidney lesion that doesn't cause any symptoms but when kidney cancer becomes symptomatic the most common uh, symptoms include hematuria or blood in the urine a back pain or flank pain, mm -hmm. or the presence of a palpable mass mm -hmm. in the area of the kidney. Those are the, the, the most common types, especially when the kidney cancer is localized. When kidney cancer uh, spreads to other organs, or in cases of metastatic renal cell carcinoma, the symptoms depend on where the metastasis is. For example, patients who develop bone metastasis mm -hmm. may present with bone pain. Uh, patients who, who have a uh, lung metastasis may present with symptoms related to, to obstruction of the airways, like mm -hmm. cough or shortness of breath, uh, and so on. Is there ever a time in which it's appropriate to seek genetic counseling when one is diagnosed with kidney cancer? Yeah, well, um, the majority of kidney cancer cases in the U.S. are uh, sporadic meaning that they are not related to any genetic syndrome or uh, they are not hereditary. However, a small percentage of patients uh, are associated with uh, familial syndromes or genetic syndromes. The most common of it is the von Hippel-Lindau syndrome or mm -hmm. VHL syndrome, mm -hmm. which is associated with a mutation of a gene called the VHL gene. And it's, it's a rare disorder that occurs in about uh, one in about in 32,000 cases in the U.S. And uh, renal cell carcinoma is one of the different tumors that may develop in these cases, and usually is the cause of death for patients with this uh, syndrome. Uh, hereditary renal cell carcinoma usually uh, is suspected in patients who have 
multiple bilateral renal tumors mm -hmm. or patients who present with kidney cancer at a young age mm -hmm. or with a strong family history of kidney tumors. So in those cases, especially if patients come with a renal cell cancer or renal tumor at a young age or has a strong family history, there is an indication to, to obtain a genetic counseling, especially to determine the risk for the offspring or other family members. I see. So let's take a step back. Let's assume for whatever reason, either the patient has had blood in the urine or has had imaging which has showed an incidental mass in the kidney. What happens next with that patient? Well, uh, the, the usual or the common situation in this is that the a patient has an imaging study for a, for a general non-specific symptom such as abdominal discomfort, etc., and the primary care physician may do an ultrasound mm -hmm. or may do a, an abdominal CT scan and it shows a, incidentally a, a localized renal mass. The next step in terms of the management is to refer the patient to a urologist. Mm -hmm. okay? And then the urologist uh, will do uh, additional testing, especially additional imaging studies. For example, a CT scan with contrast, depending on uh, the patient's renal function or an MRI, to better characterize that mass, mm -hmm. to look at the extension of the mass, to look at whether it is localized or locally advanced. And also, uh, uh, additional imaging studies of the abdomen and chest to determine whether the tumor has a metastasized or not. I see. Would you please explain what a perineoplastic syndrome is and how does that relate to kidney cancer? Mm -hmm. Perineoplastic syndrome uh, are a, a series of symptoms or signs or laboratory abnormalities that may be associated with the presence of a specific tumor. Okay? This occurs in several tumor types and kidney cancer is one, one of those. Uh, this, uh, uh, Paraneoplastic syndromes in kidney cancer uh, uh, can uh, occur uh, at the beginning when the patient is initially diagnosed or also can occur during the course of the disease. There are several uh, well-established and characterized paraneoplastic syndromes in kidney cancer. For example, patients may uh, develop um, uh, increased red blood cell, it's called uh, erythrocytosis which may be associated with production of a, of a hormone called erythropoietin that uh, increases the number of red blood cells. There's also a, some other a, a paraneoplastic syndromes that occur in patients with large renal masses. For example, some patients may have elevation of the liver function studies without having a liver metastasis, mm -hmm. which is associated with uh, these renal tumors that, that in cases uh, resolve when the primary renal tumors uh, go away. Mm. Some patients also may develop uh, high levels of calcium or hypercalcemia, which may be due to, uh, uh, in most of the cases in kidney cancer, are due to the development of metastasis in the bones, but uh, uh, hypercalcemia may be a, a potentially dangerous uh, a complication of patients with uh, metastatic kidney cancer that will need uh, immediate attention. Are there any risk factors that increase your chance of developing kidney cancer? There have been a lot of studies, epidemiological, population-based studies, uh, looking at what may cause kidney cancer. And the short answer for that is that there's no specific cause mm -hmm. okay, that could be directly linked for the development of uh, renal cell carcinoma. There are, however, several uh, associations mm -hmm. between uh, uh, habits, or uh, clinical characteristics that may be associated with a higher risk of renal cell carcinoma and the two factors that have been mostly studied and I would say are established as potential risk factors mm -hmm. are smoking and obesity. Mm -hmm. Are there any lifestyle changes that you would recommend in terms of diet or exercise or smoking when one is diagnosed with kidney cancer? Well, uh, there are no studies that have shown that changes in a uh, lifestyle can modify the prognosis or can improve the prognosis once the patients have been diagnosed. What I usually recommend my patients is to, to like if they have a, a factor that may uh, be associated with increased risk, such as smoking, for example, okay. to immediately quit smoking. Uh, uh, not 
only because uh, it is a risk factor for kidney cancer, but also because it is good for the patient's health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's no specific dietary recommendations, unless patients who have kidney cancer have also uh, problems with the renal function. Some patients may have a large renal masses or bilateral renal masses that may affect the renal function and patients may develop renal insufficiency mm -hmm. and that could uh, and, and in that in those cases I usually recommend my patients to go to a, a, a nephrologist or to a, and to a nutritionist to recommend uh, diets that are specific for their conditions yes, in terms of exercise uh, if patients have kidney cancer and are being treated for renal cell carcinoma, I usually recommend regular exercise for cardiovascular health and for, and for well-being. That mm -hmm. may help patients uh, uh, feel better, feel stronger, and probably tolerate treatments better. I see. Are there any support groups that you recommend your patients uh, inquire or join once they've been diagnosed with kidney cancer? Well. Uh, there are several support groups in, uh, at the institutional level. So I'm not going to talk about the ones at the UN, but, but in general, there are several support groups, and one that uh, uh, where patients could potentially have access to is the American Cancer Society, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where they will get a, a large amount of information about renal cell carcinoma and other cancers, and also potential links to local support groups mm -hmm. that the patients may access and, 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 be, and benefit from, from those. I see. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational. In the upcoming videos, we will discuss the management of kidney cancer.